Hello Owners Chemistry and welcome to Chapter 6, Section 6.5, Using Chemical Formulas as Conversion Factors. So previously we talked about the concept of molar mass and uh, Avogadro's number, right? And how between those two things, right, we get the relationship between mass and moles and we get the relationship between moles and particles, right? Now we're going to talk about using the chemical formula. What, can, what relationships are embedded in a chemical formula, right? And we talked about this previously in chapter five, right? Well, we mentioned it in how to read a formula and then we sort of moved on to naming, right? Well, here we revisit that concept, right? Where when I see this formula, Na2O, I understand that that means, uh, let's use the proper words, two ions of sodium, right? Are for every one ion of oxygen, yes? Right, that's what that means. Or we could say that there are two ions of sodium for every one, formula unit of Na2O, right? Um, or I could say that there is one ion of oxygen for every one formula unit of Na2O, yes? Okay, and so those are some of the particle relationships that we can draw from that formula, right? Likewise, for this formula, I could say that there are, it's, it's ionic also, right? So two ions of aluminum, for every three ions of SO4, right? We could also say that there are two ions of aluminum for every one ion of sulfur, right? Um, and the list goes on and on, right? We could say that there are 12 ions of oxygen for every two ions of aluminum, right? And we could write a few more, okay? Now, thinking back to the way the word mole works, right? Whether we're talking about one dozen, right? Well, one dozen means 12, right? Like there's a meaning there, right? But whether I'm counting by the dozen or I'm counting by ones, right? Um, I'm still counting the same thing and the relationship means the same, right? So if I said two ions of sodium to every one ion of oxygen, it's still true if I say two dozen sodium for every one dozen oxygen, yes, does that make sense, right? For me to say, and let's be clear here, right, two ions of sodium to one ion of oxygen is the same ratio as saying two dozen ions of sodium for every one dozen ions of oxygen, yes, does that make sense? Which is why to say two moles of Na for every one mole of O is the same relationship. It's just a different scale, yes? This is talking about the individual particle. This is talking about on the scale of moles, right? So I could also say two moles of sodium for every one mole of that, yes? Likewise, over here, I could say two moles of aluminum for every three moles of sulfate, right? And so forth and so on, right? And what this gives us is this gives us a way to describe the relationships embedded in a chemical formula, either at the singular particle level, right? or at the larger mole level, where moles are just a scaled up number of particles, yes? And so these relationships all serve as, ding, 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 conversion factors, right? Which allow us re to relate the different components of a compound to either the whole compound or to each other, okay? Now, let's go ahead and read some problems and do them together and, make sure, and we're gonna read them very carefully to make sure that we understand how these problems are worded differently than the problems we did in the previous section, right? So this says to determine the mass of oxygen, right? So here's our goal, in a 5.8 gram sample of sodium bicarbonate, and here's our given, right? So note that it's saying grams here and grams here, right? So clearly it can't be grams and grams of the same thing, right? And so if we're thoughtful, we're asking for grams of a part relative to the whole, yes? We're asking for grams of a part relative to the whole. And that's what all of these are. Yes, these are part versus whole relationships, yes? So sodium bicarbonate, let's look at that formula, right? Eight means, right, polyatomic ion. Sodium is a metal, right? So definitely an ionic compound. So sodium has a charge of plus one. Bicarbonate has a charge of minus one. So NaHCO3 is our formula and I would like to know the mass of oxygen. So let's go ahead and work this out. So 5.8 grams of NaHCO3. Now, 
I need a relationship between oxygen and sodium bicarbonate. So thinking back to what we just did, I know that for every one, let's use moles, right? So every one mole of sodium bicarbonate, oftentimes, if you don't know where else to go, moles are usually a good place, right? Are equal to oxygen, three moles of oxygen. Yes, that's a relationship that this formula gives us. So I can't use that until I get to moles, which means what do I need to convert to here? Right, I need to use the molar mass. So we have 84.01 grams of NaHCO3 for every one mole of NaHCO3. And then for every one mole of NaHCO3, there are three moles of oxygen, yes? And I know now if I wanna to get to grams of oxygen, I'm just gonna use, right, the molar mass of oxygen. So one mole of oxygen is six grams of oxygen. And we'll see that my moles of oxygen cancel, moles of bicarbonate, grams of bicarbonate, and I'm left with grams of oxygen. Yes, make sense? All right, so same thing. So determine the mass of oxygen, here's our goal, in a 7.20 gram sample of that. So same principle. Um, let's go ahead and write our relationships, right? So oxygen to aluminum sulfate, there are three sulfates, and there are four oxygens per sulfate, which means there are 12 moles of oxygen equal to every one mole of Al2SO4-3, okay? Um, so then, 7.20 grams of Al2SO4-3, molar mass now. So we have 3342.14 grams of Al2SO43 to every one mole of Al2SO43. And for every one mole of Al2SO43, going back to here, there are 12 moles of oxygen. And for every one mole of oxygen, I know that is 16 grams. And we'll see that all of our tidbits cancel. And we just need to do the math. Yes, does that make sense? All right. Um, thank you for listening. Be good. And in the next one, we move on to the concept of percents in chemical formulas. All right. Thanks for listening. Be good.